So my friends, I think you know by now that I'm honoured to be sponsored by GQ Legal Specialists. For all your legal needs in Aotearoa, New Zealand, consider GQ. Kia ora te whanau, and thank you for joining me as I continue my brave exploration of te reo Māori and Māori culture. So many of you have been following along. I'm so grateful for your time as we explore this wonderful work. It's called Ask That Mountain. And as you know, if, unless you're new, it's a real seminal work for Aotearoa New Zealand because it depicts the history of um, the region um, where I live, which is Taranaki, which is, and specifically Parehaka. The story captures really, I think, much of the essence of the struggle of the Māori people as they were faced with uh, European colonisers who came onto the land and um, really stole it. So um, I wanted to continue today by um, introducing or kind of just thinking a little bit about um, Te Fiti's kind of partner in his kind of mostly passive resistance to the uh, colonizers. His partner's name was Tohu Kākahi. Now I hope I've pronounced that correctly guys. Um, I haven't ever heard it spoken actually at this point um, so I may have mispronounced it and I hope you will forgive me my Māori whānau out there if you are watching this. Um, so this is interesting about um, Tohu because there seems to be a, a fair bit of mystery around his life um, and I mean, maybe, you know, some of my Māori whānau and certainly uh, whānau who are really tangata whenua for this region may be able to say more about this. And if I learn more from my friends and whānau, um, I will kind of relay that to you. But really, I'm going by what I've learned so far. And I'm really intrigued because um, it seems like he was a really lovely compliment to Te Fiti. So one of the notable aspects of Tohu's career, as it were, as this very much warlike leader uh, that he was, um, even though they were both on this path and this mission of really, I guess, attempting the impossible, really, um, because there is there is violence to colonisation. There's no getting around it. But it's so remarkable, I think, in many respects, when I look at some of the numbers, although every life lost is a tragedy in any war, it could have been so much worse had they not taken that approach of passive resistance, I think. So Tohu captured a bishop, um, Bishop Selwyn, along the way. And um, this this garnered him, I think, the reputation as this war leader. And in the end, I think that, and along with the fact that he showed less mercy towards the settlers and eventually this ended up in his demise. One of the reasons why I feel that, perhaps anyway, I'm not sure about this, because this is my feeling, that Tohu and Tafiti were less successful in part of their mission as they might have been, is because some Māori sided with the government. Um, and so that really undermined the efforts of Tohu and Tafiti. And it's really interesting, just as a complete side note, I've just come off another app, just coincidentally, just now, and um, I follow a couple of Māori micro-influencers and we follow each other and I learn so much from these people. I haven't actually asked their permission to name them, so I won't at this point, but it might be that at some point we can do some kind of collaboration. I'm not sure, because, you know, people don't always cross over to other apps. I mean, I have always had the ideal of spreading myself out, but then of course you, you pick your favorites and you find out which ones are slightly less racist than the you other. Find out which ones have a little bit, slightly more equity, and then you go with those. <laughs> so in other words, I'm not sure that I'll be able to convince um, these Māori micro-influencers to kind of, um, join with me and share what they know. But one of the things I was just listening to was a korero all about decolonization of Māori people and tangata, tangata whenua, right? So a case was being made really um, in regard to the fact that some Māori have lost 
touch with this was this was not my argument by the way guys this is the person i'm mentioning on on another app was saying that you know you guys she's moldy right she was saying it's so disappointing to hear how some people are telling her oh let it go it was a long time ago these are moldy people her own whānau effectively you know so it's interesting no culture is a monolith no no race or anything you know and you find the same thing people often say to me about certain key figures uh, for example in in the united states who have been very supportive of the current uh, administration outgoing administration fingers crossed <laughs> But it's like, and, and people are scratching their head, like, how can they support this guy when they said he hate, you know, you live in, you've come from a shithole country and all the other, you know, insults. And and the term to look up, and I've written about this, my friends, as a side note, is internalised racism. I've spoken about it here. I have much content on these themes. So if you want to find out, you know, I have made that content available for people who perhaps have curious minds like you guys watching this. So there is information out there and it's not that baffling when you understand some of the psychology underneath it but anyway i find it fascinating that even as far back as the 1870s the the same issue was already established that some maori had already got to the i guess to the stage of i mean we could we could kind of think about all the different reasons why um you know some would have just thought oh well we should just you know surrender and we'll, you know it's all fair and it's all fine and let's just go with the flow and not cause trouble i mean you know i can imagine some compelling reasons why um some of the maori people at that time would have felt that way but it, it is in my view and definitely watching that documentary i named a few weeks back now uh why the reason why you know there was less success and it was you know to be honest really the maori had immense success and particularly given the level of sophistication in terms of the warfare that was kind of thrust on them uh, and what they had you know really they were going with their own wisdom and that incredible uh connection to the land and, and their ancestors that really protected them in my view i think one of the really striking um aspects of Tohu's legacy is that he continued to fight allegedly apparently until his death about the the kind of ills of alcohol and just really in my view my, my heart my sense about it is just that he really was still trying to hold a light for uh, Māori to resist being kind of um integrated or whatever you know i don't even know what terms to use sometimes for these things that none of them are satisfactory they're all kind of cringeworthy aren't they you know integration what does that mean you say so you give up yourself you know but um one of the things that yeah as i say i find striking is that he made that his mission about really saying that the alcohol was was he it's almost like i feel like he saw into the future and some of the issues that, that would face Māori if they just continue down that track. And as a psychotherapist who works in the community, works across the board in terms of my dem the demographics of the people I work with, um, I can say, at least from my own experience, and I'm sure I'm not alone, the only clinician who would agree that although alcoholism doesn't necessarily cause problems, the two things, the, the kind of the real massive issues we face in Aotearoa, such as around domestic violence, around sexual violence, around sexual harm. They're really fueled by um, alcohol in my view. And I think it's it's a real tragedy that um, that it was introduced to, into this beautiful culture all of that time ago. And um, it's still wreaking havoc even now. But um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't think there could have been a tafiti without Tohu. And although he's not the star of the, the show, as it were, in the book, he is an absolutely integral part of the success that they had in their passive resistance. So, my friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, be sure to like, subscribe, hit your notifications bell so you can follow along and catch up as well. I usually link below, I think, the first episode of this series. I know some people like to watch things from the, from the start and there's something nice about that. So if you want to catch up with us, then you are more than welcome. Join the Soul Food Whānau. We're a lovely bunch. 
Thank you again for watching, my dear ones, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Kia ora.